everybody. Welcome to today's live tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about all things skin, all things complexion, and how to get your best looking skin with makeup. And today we have our beautiful model. This is Michelle. And we're <laughs> so happy to have her. She's gorgeous. And she told me before I started that she's 52. She said I could share her age. And she looks amazing. I've had a lot of her. And you maybe are wearing a dress or something where you see like shoulders and more of the chest area. This is my little secret. So I have a couple products I like for that area. The first one is by Vita Liberati. This is called Body Blur. And this is the shade Latte. So this, this is the shade that generally works well on most people. So what this product does, it's, it's an illuminator, so it's gonna make all your exposed skin look really glowy and really perfect. And it has a little bit of um, color to it, so it's gonna give a little bit of a blurring effect. But the second thing I like to occasionally use is the KKW Beauty um, Body Foundation. This is a skin perfecting body foundation. So this is made to go over your entire body. You can do this on your legs, you can do this on your arms, you can do this on your chest. You really feel extra. But I love it for this area. So I'm going to mix these two on Michelle today. We're going to start off just with a little bit and then we'll probably do more. So the reason I like to do I like to mix them. The KKW Beauty is full coverage, so that's going to cover anything. And the Vita Liberati is more of a glow. It gives you a little bit of coverage, so mixing the two gives me a really good result. So generally, a lot of people, if you're out in the sun ever and you're not super diligent about your, your skincare, we all tend to be like many different colors. So people will have more of a darker or red area on the chest and then the neck is lighter. So doing a foundation like this just makes everything look really even and really complete. It's a fun little secret. So I just use a very giant brush. This is my Morphe, this is the E1. You could use a beauty blender if you wanted, but the bigger the brush you use, the quicker it's gonna go. Have you ever done body makeup ever, Michelle? No. The first time. <laughs> spray tan, but that's it. <laughs> and honestly, that's why people love spray tans. Even if you're fairly tan, like I feel like you have a good like skin tone. You're a little more golden. But everyone loves spray tans before vacation because they just make you look like tighter and more toned and more right. like even. Like, even. don't you think? Mm -hmm. For sure. So this is like that, but boosted. It's like the ultra spray tan. Look, I'm just going to pull your shirt down slightly. So I like to do, you want to do everything that's exposed. So I'll do the chest and I'll go over the shoulders a little bit just to keep it even. I generally don't do um, people's arms, but you can. I have done legs. So when I've done like photo shoots with models or something and it's like very much a shot where like everything is seen, I like to do just the Vita Liberati on the legs because it makes you so, so glowy. Okay, we're going to turn you a little bit to do this side. And you guys were live, so welcome to those of you in our chat. We love you guys. And if you're joining us for the first time and you're watching the replay, you can still view the live chat or you can comment as normal as any YouTube video. And I'm pretty good about answering my comments. If you guys ever have any questions, just drop them. And I will link everything we are doing down below. Okay. I don't want to pull Michelle's shirt down on camera. <laughs> I do. So we'll that's keep you covered. Show. Yes. That's right. <laughs> this is a G rated channel. <laughs> so we won't be doing that. And I don't. So what, what I do is I'll generally, I just make sure like this inch, I don't know if we can see it on our main camera, probably on our further away camera you can see. So what I generally do is I just want to give her like an inch to work with. So I'll pull down the top a little bit and just make sure if the shirt kind of moves when she's out or whatever she's wearing, that, that skin looks even, but obviously you don't need to do the, scene, the skin that's not seen unless you want it. But okay, so I love the way this looks. It looks super natural. So even in person, it doesn't look like Michelle's wearing body makeup and it holds up pretty well. Um, the the um, formula of body makeup, it's just a little bit easier to spread than an actual foundation. And it's a little bit more resistant to getting on your clothes and stuff like that. I've actually had, when I've played around and worn this, it really doesn't rub off on my clothes, but I'm sure it could, so be aware of that. You're wearing white or something like that. Okay, so that bronzed up Michelle, she's very even, she's very glowy. Let me show you guys, we're gonna stay on the body and then we'll move up into the face. 
Um, so another thing I like to do, I usually do this when I highlight the face, but I don't want to forget to show you guys, so I'm going to do it now, is I also like to top this with a little bit of highlighter. The KKW Beauty is a little bit more matte since it is very full coverage and the Vita Liberati is very glowy. So she has a little bit of a sheen from mixing the two, but I like to add a little bit more of a punch when I do this. So we're gonna use the Dior Backstage Glow Palette. This is the palette number one. And we're gonna be mainly using this gold shade in here. So we're just gonna use any highlighting brush. And I love to do the shoulders. I think shoulders are so pretty. So I love to give those a little bit of a glow. And then for sure, collarbone. Collarbones are really pretty too, so I'll always give those a little bit of glow. And you can kind of, you could do a big brush and do kind of all over, but generally I just do like the high points. And it looks so pretty. I hope you guys can see good with our camera angle. I didn't warn Kelly today that I was going to be doing this first. Okay, so beautiful. Let's move on up. Um, so what I like to do as far as skincare, skincare and prep work before you do your, your foundation is like bricks. It's like the foundation of your building. It's the foundation of your face. It's very, very important to getting a really nice natural look. So what I love to do um, for skin in like the 40s, 50s, 60s, almost any age, honestly, I love the mm -hmm. Sonia Roselli um, water bomb. So this is a hydrating moisturizer, but the texture of it is really fantastic. It's very thin. So if you have... Um, dry your skin or you've ever used like a really heavy moisturizer they kind of feel like filmy after like more of like a night cream sort of a feeling I feel like a lot of moisturizers feel like that and makeup just doesn't lay great over them but this one is super great it really absorbs into the skin quite nicely and very quickly which is great for makeup and it gives a really flawless base for the makeup so I oftentimes will only use this, like I'll layer different serums and stuff like this and finish with this. I feel like it seals everything in and this is all I do for a primer usually. So this is all I'm gonna do on Michelle. And you really do, you're pretty diligent about your skincare, right Michelle? Yes. Yeah, you can tell. Have you always had like little pores or do you feel like you've used something recently that helped? Um, I think I've always been pretty lucky with skin. Never really had a lot of acne as a kid. That's so good. Do you tend to be like more dry on the dry side? As you get older, you get drier. Yeah. For sure. Felt like I had more combination skin in my, you know, 30s, early 40s, and then after you get dry. It was more dry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good product for that. So we before we started, we exfoliated um, Michelle, and then I did the water elixir. I'll show you guys that really quick. So this is also by Sonia Roselli. So this is like a toner, but it's just super hydrating. It's like a really big punch of moisture. And then I seal it with the water bomb. And just even looking at Michelle's skin, it just looks really smooth. There's absolutely no like tackiness to it. It's very smooth, very nice, um, very velvety. And what I love is that it just doesn't feel heavy. Like I'm not feeling layers and layers of products. That's gonna work super well for my foundation. Okay, moving on to foundation. When you do the, um, kind of these next up. Okay, when you do a bronzer or a, a body foundation, a lot of times people like to look a little bit more glowy, a little bit more bronze. So I will do like a shade darker on their chest and everything. And then usually you need to go a little bit darker with the foundation than, than her actual face, but everything's gonna blend. So we're gonna mix a couple things. I really love um, the NARS foundations. They work really great for giving some nice coverage but not being too heavy. I feel like it, they're really great for people with skin like Michelle's where it's like, it's nice and even, we're not covering much, but there are a couple little areas where we just want, will want a little bit of coverage and you can build this and get that. Okay, so that's looking like a good shade. This is usually where I'll match things. Um, and I'll just kind of see with my eye how it's looking as it goes down the neck and the chest. I never match the center of the face. People have a lot of redness there and you won't get an even read. So I'm just going to add a couple of pumps of this on my tray. And so another trick that I love to do with this foundation and the Water Balm product is I really like to mix the two. 
Um, I don't like to go to full coverage unless that's the look we want, unless they have a lot of things to cover up. Generally, the preferred texture of people's skin, like for people wearing makeup, is to not feel too heavy and to still look skin-like. So I really, really love to mix the water balm almost equal parts with the water balm to the foundation. So we're going to do that today. It just shears it out a little bit. So we're just going to mix these two on a little tray. I'm going to go ahead and apply this. So we already started with Michelle's eyes done already, but um, Kelly did film a little before video for us, so we'll show you guys later the, the full before. Okay, so I'm just going to use a little buffing brush, and we're going to go ahead and do a layer of this. So this is... Um, the NARS foundation and the Sonia Roselli water balm. So we're just going to do a nice even spread of this. And you can see how it's just really evening out her skin, but it looks flawless. It looks very sheer. And then I'll teach you guys a trick to building it up in certain areas. And why I do this, I'm going to pull open the chat if you guys want to say hello to Michelle ask any questions okay hi guys hi everyone okay hi lead k hi kelly hi tammy and e shady c says hi i love watching julie's channel i'm so glad to see 50 plus secrets yay <laughs> um that's so fun i'm a redhead going white but still have freckles all over what what would you recommend for a nars color for foundation Okay, redhead going white, I mean going gray, and you have freckles all over. So it's hard to say without seeing you in person, how fair are you um, with your freckles? Are you wanting to be shade match? Because I can show you my shades I would, that I would think. Give me a little more, a little more info. I also have, I have a couple tutorials with, um, models with freckles i love freckles so much and actually uh, the nars foundation is a really really great one for freckles because it's so buildable um freckles are so beautiful usually people that have a lot of freckles still want them to show through and i like that you can do that with the nars foundation you can still even out the skin tone but have your freckles show but because of the way the foundation is formulated it's so easy to layer it if you do want to cover all your freckles on occasion you can do that with the exact same foundation so good. Michelle, you're going to be so fancy. You have to go do something fun later. <laughs> a couple of people that have modeled for me have had like photos that day for something and we always get excited. We're like, oh, yay, you'll be like so ready for that. <laughs> What's your, um, do you wear foundation? Yes. What do you like? Well, I'm kind of in between foundations yeah. right now. I'm having a hard time finding something I like. It's hard. Foundation is the hardest, I feel like. It is. Especially because my skin is changing a lot right now. Yeah. Right now I'm wearing a Bare Minerals. It's a stick and I'm... Like a creamy stick? Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm liking it. Yeah, I have like love-hate relationship with sticks. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I'll use them and I'm like, oh my gosh, the coverage is amazing right. and it's so creamy. But they don't... Like, depending on how your skin is the day, they don't always hold up as well. Right. For me, I feel like. Right. Yeah, it's just as women, I feel like just our skin is always changing. Like, it'll change with the seasons. It'll change with, mm -hmm. like, that time of the month or anything hormonal that's going right. on. So it's tricky. It's hard to find something that's not going to just sit in your cracks in your face mm -hmm. and cake. I know that's so the bummer with foundation I always tell everybody I, I think people gravitate towards foundation obviously to make your skin look better mm -hmm. and it does but it it only really addresses the color it doesn't improve texture so much in fact it can kind of make it worse if you don't have the right one agree so that's why I like all these tips and tricks that's why I'm so about skin prep because I feel like that helps so much more mm -hmm. I mean, if you did a super full coverage foundation, it would look so great filtered or in photos or something like that. Right. But in real life, there's just texture. Right. Okay, so this is my first layer. And I just did a kabuki brush. You can use a brush. You can use a beauty blender. 
and we have a super nice wash of color her skin looks great so if i want to address just certain areas to do a little bit more coverage what i'm going to do is i'm going to do another pump of foundation but i am not going to shear it out with the water bomb so this is going to be more full coverage so i'm going to take the same brush and just go over generally it's like the cheek area for women I just have want a little bit more coverage but by doing it this way you're going to get the nice even color of the foundation but you're going to avoid extra texture where you don't need it okay i'm going to tilt you a little bit i'm kind of going to turn you so i can make sure okay perfect so you can use when you're spot concealing you can use a smaller brush or you can use actual concealer and i may show you guys how to do that today but i have found that with a good foundation i get plenty of coverage without needing to hop over to a concealer which is so nice for day to day because doing little spot concealers um, and setting each individual area it honestly takes forever and <laughs> i feel like if you can cut corners that's fantastic okay so that is looking so good to me so another thing i like to do if i am bronzing and i'm sort of deepening the skin a little bit I you need to address the nose area and I'll show you guys what I mean once I find the right brush Let's use this guy okay so I put concealer on her eyes before we started um, and I don't like to conceal or prime the eyes with a color that's too dark it just kind of looks heavy and it gets you off to a bad start but she has that concealer in this area now but then the foundation sits a little bit darker so I need to blend this area if that makes sense so I'm just going to take a little buffing brush and just sort of blur that line and it's okay you you want this tear duct area to be lighter it's going to do really good things for the eyes and for the face but you just don't want like a line of where the foundation is that's darker if that makes sense like pay attention to your edges and this is an extra step this honestly just depends on how the bridge of your nose is shaped and how the brush or beauty blender you're using sort of contours that area when you're applying your makeup Okay, next, you guys, we're going to talk a little bit about contouring, and then we're going to talk about the under eye area, because that is the area that I think is the most searched on YouTube. People have the most questions on it. It's tricky. How do we get coverage? But how do we not get fine lines? How do we keep it from creasing? We're going to cover all of that. Um, let's kind of check things out okay I like the way that's looking we're gonna do powder contour today so let's actually move right into the under eye area so if you will notice her under eyes are lighter right now than her skin and looking at the way her under eye is and stuff like that she doesn't really have bags or anything like that so <laughs> she has a great <laughs> under eye area and so I can go ahead and highlight that and bring that forward um, I think a lot of people get confused on what color to use for concealer. A lot of people want to grab really light color, but if you feel like you have excess puffiness or you don't love the way um, your under eyes are, like if they protrude a little bit or something like that, you may want to go with a concealer that is exactly your skin tone and that will look super great for you. Um, with Michelle, I'm going to show you guys how I like to brighten. So we are going to stick with, we'll be loyal to NARS and we will use, um, We'll use a NARS shade right now. I'm going to mix custard and honey, I think. So I really like honey because it's kind of pink. So we'll be mixing these for the under eye area. These are just a little bit lighter than her um, foundation is going to be. So I'm going to show you guys how to brighten. So the reason I love NARS, the creamy concealer, is because you get such a great coverage, but you don't get a lot of texture. And it, I have found that it really doesn't crease, especially if you set it. So it gets the gold star for me and that's what we're going to use today um another thing i love is this it, it cosmetics brush and i will link it for you guys this is very magical for the under eye area it does a really good job of blending the product okay so i'm just going to tap a little bit right here so we can see the color so this is lighter but it still maintains the tone of the foundation and it's going to look really good so the biggest tip for the under eye area is do not use too much product and i'm sure you've heard this before but i think it's really hard 
um, to not when you're doing your own makeup because generally people will pop it on right from the tube, which is fine, but it's just easy when you're in a hurry and it's just sort of part of your daily routine not to throw on a little bit. A lot of product, it's faster. So try just using a brush, putting it in a dish and really shearing it out and just applying minimal, minimal. This will be a big game changer. I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. You can absolutely, on your own skin, apply it directly from the tube. Just be very mindful. I feel like doing it on a dish and then applying it on your skin is a good way to kind of teach yourself how much you need. So the reason I like to do it, I'll mix it in my brush and then I'll sort of shear it out and we're just gonna use very minimal product. And I like to do what I call like the triangle of light under the eyes. So we go down the side of the nose about to here, and then we go up on the cheekbones, and then obviously under the eye. And that's gonna bring this part of the area or of, of the face forward. It kind of mimics cheek fillers. So cheek fillers are really popular right now. People will inject like a filler, a derma filler, right in there to kind of lift that area of the face and bring it look forward because it's more youthful, it's very flattering to the face. So this is essentially like the makeup version of that. We're just playing with light. But like I was saying earlier, um, if people have puffiness under the eyes, it's already brought forward. So if you're doing a light color, it will just sort of accentuate that. And you can absolutely still do this trick. Just be mindful of that. And maybe don't go very light here. Go more light here, if that makes sense. I have lots of tutorials on my channel, and I do have models that have had sort of puffiness under their eyes, and we still have highlighted. You can absolutely do it. Just be mindful, and you may need to alter things a little bit. Okay, so same thing, I'm just brightening this area. And another tip for under eye concealer, I really like um, my concealer to have a peach undertone or like a little bit of a pink undertone. I like that more so than a yellow undertone. It brightens and highlights better. So this foundation has more of like a golden undertone and then this highlighter is more peachy but they still go together very nicely. Also, when I was doing foundation, I absolutely avoided like the eye area, like nothing from here up had foundation on it. The foundation, um, it's just a different formula. The under eye air skin is so thin and so delicate. You just don't want any heaviness and foundation is made to last a long time it's made to kind of be tacky so that it doesn't move around it doesn't smudge and it lasts if your skin produces oil but your under eye area is generally not going to produce any oil or have those problems so that's why we use a different product for this area is just the formula is a lot different okay so once i get up near the eye i do want a little bit of coverage but i don't want too much product so i'm just doing little pressing motions Hey, and I love the way that's looking. I'm just gonna highlight a little bit more of these areas on her face just to blend. So that's looking so, so pretty. Okay, now I'm going to set, and you tend to be more a little more dry, right, Michelle? Mm -hmm. You don't get too oily. So we're not gonna set much. You can even skip it if you want to. Just play around with how your makeup is. Okay, but we are gonna set the under eyes. So this is Laura Mercier translucent powder. So I'm just gonna put a teeny, teeny, teeny bit on like a dome brush, and I'm just gonna lightly tap under what we just did. So when you set the under eye with powder, you're gonna set it and it's really gonna help keep it from creasing. And you do not need much at all. Because like I said, this area really doesn't produce oil. All we're doing, all we're looking to do is set this area. Slightly going to do that. The areas that do produce oil tend to be around the nose, between the eyebrows, the chin, around the mouth a little bit. So I usually will set those and then I'm going to switch to a very large a fluffy brush and we're just going to go in with that powder just a teeny bit and we're just going to lightly dust this over the face. Lightly, lightly. 
just to sort of set things. Okay, let's talk a little bit about contouring and how we can play with the um, shape of the face using this. So I'm gonna use the Hula Bronzer on Michelle today. This is a good tone. Um, the Hula Bronzers, to me, are, have a nice neutral base, but they obviously have that warmth to them. So I like them. They're neutral enough where I can contour, but they have enough warmth where I can also bronze too. So we're gonna use an angled fluffy brush just go in with this and I like to start under the cheeks because generally that's where I want it to be darkest so I'm going to turn Michelle so you guys can see so I like to start at the top of the ear I like to end at the edge of the eyebrow and the biggest thing for you guys is do not go too low with your contour a lot of people will go in the natural hollows of the cheek but you actually want to go kind of right above that not on the top of the cheek where the highlighter is but sort of right in this area if that makes sense that's going to lift your face if you go too low with your contour, you're gonna make your face look longer. You're not gonna give your cheeks that nice sculpted look. So the reason why we contour, back to like highlighting and contour and playing with light, light brings things forward and dark makes things recede. It brings them down. So we're giving, Michelle has nice cheekbones, but we're giving her these beautiful sculpted cheeks. And you wanna do that in the right spot. So we're just doing that. And because this this contour is also a bronzer, you can kind of use it as a blush. So I'm almost putting this like where I would contour, but a little bit above using it sort of as a, a blush, if that makes sense, like a bronzer. And then I like to go into the hairline up here. Just give the forehead a little bit of dimension. We're just sculpting the face. We're bringing everything forward so that her eyes and her pretty cheeks and lips and brows are the focus. We want to bring the eyes to the center of the face. That's why we darken the edges. What do you tend to do with eyeshadow, Michelle? Um, more neutrals. Neutrals. Mm -hmm. We kind of did neutrals on you today. I did like a really soft, smoky eye. Michelle hasn't seen. She came and sat in my chair and I just <laughs> started doing stuff. But she was sweet to be our model today. I just got the Charlotte Tilbury. She has these really great eye quads. Let me pull it for you guys so you can see. To pull it later. Um, but she has these really great eye quads and they have four colors, but she makes them so well and they're really, really a great formula. They're very creamy and her masks are super good. So. We only did one color eyeshadow on Michelle's lid, and then I did a bit of a shimmer underneath. Okay. All right, I love the way that's looking. We're gonna go into blush. So I really like to use my Hourglass palette. I love all things Hourglass. Hourglass, generally along around holiday, they'll come out with a palette with different products mixed into it, but you can also buy their individual products. So. This one has a bronzer and it has blushes and then highlighting powders. So I really like to use kind of a mix of all of them on the face. So we'll start with the bronzer since that's what we were just doing. Um, the Hourglass bronzer is very sheer and it's very illuminating. So I like to top the Hula one. The Hula one's more matte and a little bit more opaque. You're gonna get a lot more coverage with it. So this one I'm going a little bit higher on the cheeks with to give some color. Browns Michelle up a little bit do it sort of on the chest under the collarbones so that's what I like to do for that and then Hourglass has these really great blushes because they're quite sheer and they're very illuminating and they just have a really great formula especially if you're a similar age to Michelle um, a lot of times powder blushes can look very heavy they're just um, more matte or whatever but the Hourglass blushes because they're kind of more sheer and they have such good um, light reflection to them. They look more like you're glowing from within rather than like really powdered up with blush. Um, and what I also really like about them is they're not glittery. They're just more, they're just light reflecting. They're illuminating. A lot of times um, glittery products tend to look a little bit more heavy and women in their 40s, 50s, plus whatever, they tend to not love a lot of glitter in all of their face products. You can absolutely still do shimmer and glitter and all that, it's great. But as a general rule, it can add a little bit more, a little more texture. Okay, that is looking beautiful. 
add a little bit more. I really like blush. I'm glad brush, blush is very trendy right now. I think it's very pretty and very youthful. And this one you can absolutely layer. Okay, now we're gonna go, I think we're gonna do the Dior palette again for the face highlighter. So this is what we did on the collarbone and the shoulders. So I like this one, this is number one. I like it because it has um, like a white, a gold, a pink, and more of a bronzer. So I just sort of cocktail it to their skin tone. So for Michelle, I'm gonna do a little bit of the white just to brighten it, and then a lot of that gold to kind of give that very glowy, bronzy look. So I like to do the tops of the cheekbone, above the lip, you can do the chin area. And I'll do the sides of the forehead a little bit. I never do um, the middle of the forehead generally. I like it kind of when the face is turned, you see like the glow of the skin more so than like a shiny forehead. I think most of us don't want like a shiny center of our forehead. So that's kind of my trick. I'll go like on the sides a little bit above the brows or up here. But generally you focus your highlight on the tops of the cheekbone. You can do the nose a little bit if you like a nose highlight. For a nose highlight, I like to use a smaller brush so that we don't widen the nose. If you do like a really um, big wash of highlighter all over the bridge of the nose, it makes the nose look wider. But if you do a skinny little line of highlighter, it's going to make the nose look more narrow. And I think no matter who you are, you generally want a smaller nose. So on every filter on Instagram, they always like make your nose look little. <laughs> That's what most people want, even though all noses are great. Don't need to have a little nose. Okay, let's do, let's do some lips so you guys can see. And I'm also gonna pull up the chat again. Okay, oh, and the, let's see, question. Oh, hi, Natasha, you're so sweet. Um, okay, question from Lady K. I am 40, I stopped using foundation because I started getting a strawberry patch look like the holes on a strawberry even with primer okay what can i do to prevent this so it sounds like sh you are talking about like larger pores um kind of that pitted look with foundation and that's like what michelle and i were saying earlier i'm going to do michelle's lips as i <laughs> answer your question um foundation absolutely can increase the look of pores like maybe your skin will look nice and stuff in person but if you start to speckle on foundation it can look pitted like kind of like a strawberry if that's what you're talking about so there definitely are things you can do to combat that so number one is good skin prep so the whole sonu roselli line um you said you were in your 40s the her whole line is so so good so what i um did for michelle and what i do for most people and you can do on your own is I start with sex appeal. So this is a exfoliant. You do it on dry skin. You spray it into your hand and you lightly massage the face for 30 seconds to a minute. Um, and it just gently sloughs off the dead skin and just creates a really nice um, foundation for your primers and your foundation or your moisturizer to sink into. And the reason that's important is because as people age, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I looked you right now. As people age, our skin doesn't exfoliate naturally as easy. You need to topically do it. And if you have a lot of dead skin cells or whatever, it's not going to look like that. But if you have kind of drier skin or a rougher texture and you're putting on these nice serums and these moisturizers, they are not sinking through that layer of dead skin. Um, so you need to exfoliate and then you need to apply like hydrating toners. Um, unless you're very, 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 very oily, everybody needs hydration. So I really like the water elixir. This is what I used on um, Michelle today. And then the water bomb is really, really, really good. So that's like my, my trio. And that alone, if you use whatever foundation you had been using and you do that trio, you will already have like way smoother of a texture. The pores won't look as big. Um, but if you really feel like you have dramatic pores, um, or pitting on the skin, acne scars, anything like that. You may also, in addition to those things, like a pore filling primer. Um, let's see if I have one up in my current kit. I don't, but I like um, 
Smashbox. They have a really good, it is called the pore filming primer and they're usually made of silicone. And so you would put those on just like a teeny, teeny, teeny amount and you're gonna press it right into the skin. So this is after your moisturizer, this is after all your skin prep, you're gonna press it into the skin just in the areas that feel like larger pores, which is usually like these areas. So you're gonna press it into the skin and then you're gonna stipple your foundation on top. So if you do the pore filling primer, it's a thicker primer and you're not gonna rub your foundation on, so you're not gonna rub it with your fingers, you're not gonna rub around with a brush, you're gonna use a stippling motion. So you can use a brush, but you're gonna go like this, not like this, or you can use a beauty blender. And if you do those things, you will see a dramatic difference in the texture of your skin. It still may be there and you still maybe will see more texture wearing foundation versus not, but if you do all those things, it will be night and day. Like you'll be amazed with the texture of your skin. Okay, so this is NYX Liners, Shade Lint, Los Angeles. I'm just gonna do like a neutral lip today since this video is more about the complexion, but we'll finish Michelle's look off. I debated. Oh, sorry. Michelle's hungry. I <laughs> need a feeder. So <laughs> Her stomach keeps <laughs> growling. I'm sorry. Mine will do that sometimes too. It's like it knows when the camera's on. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'll growl today and I don't have a growly stomach. Okay, so we're just going to lightly fill this in. Michelle has very good lips, so we're just following her natural, her natural shape. And this is a really good color. This Los Angeles shade, this is so good. It's like so universal. It's very good for a dark neutral lip. Dark meaning, I feel like nude lips with makeup used to be like foundation lips. Like you have no lips, like very nude. But now nude to me, like a deeper nude is like you still get some definition and stuff like that. So the Los Angeles is good for that. I'm just going to clean up the, the bottom line. We started laughing when I was doing the, the lips. <laughs> I'm excited for you to see your makeup, Michelle. <laughs> okay, so now that that is on, um, we'll do a little bit of a lipstick. One thing I really like to do if you're doing like a more of a natural look, I like to do a liner just to give the lips some nice shape, a little bit of definition, and then just throw a gloss on top. Maybe I will do that, I'm not sure. We'll throw on a little bit of a little bit of a lip shade for you. Are you a lipstick girl? Uh, sometimes. Sometimes. Just depends. <laughs> we'll do one. Okay, let me go back. I think Lady K had another comment. Okay, right. oh, she, this, she's talking about the um, the pores. This is the question I answered, but there's like an addition. She said, right in my cheek area and under my eyes and around my nose. I was so embarrassed when I pointed that. Yeah, that is, those areas that you're talking about, that's so, so common for women. A lot of people have texture there. Um, and honestly, sometimes, like, I don't know if you're the type of person that wears foundation all the time. It sounds like you said, oh, it's you were just kind of developing these pores. Okay, I see what you're saying. Also, I don't know how you are with your skincare, but I have no, like I used to fall asleep in my foundation all the time. Like I love my full coverage foundation and I would fall asleep on it and then just wash my face really good in the morning. And that's like so bad for your skin. So wash your face at night. I'm so good about my skincare now and I can see a big difference. Also, I feel like facials help first, like I'm very, I'm elaborating a lot on your question because I think there are so many women that struggle with the same thing and have questions on it. Um, and there's just, there is a lot you can kind of do to combat it, but it has a lot of factors. Like maybe you do need to switch foundation shades and that can help, or brands and that can help. But a lot of times it's just addressing like the actual skin. And if it's kind of under your eyes, for sure switch. Um, the way you're doing your under eye concealer too. If you're doing a concealer, use way less and that will help. This is the shade Honey Love. This is by MAC. Okay, and then we're gonna top it with a gloss. I love these Buxom glosses, like love them. So we're gonna use Dolly today. These Buxom cream glosses are so good because they're quite opaque for a gloss. You get a lot of color payoff. And they're plumping. 
which is nice. My stomach's scrambling too, or some of us are like talking to each other. I feel like it's like yawning. Like when somebody, or probably because I just said yawn, you're going to yawn, you guys are going to yawn. It's like a funny, like, our bodies just want to like do what everyone else does, like yawn, tummy, growling. <laughs> See, my stomach just growled, but like my throat growled. That was weird. It's all good. <laughs> We're just going to do it again. Okay, so that is very beautiful. Do you guys, if you guys have any other skin <laughs> questions, complexion questions, drop them because our chat's a little bit delayed. So let me know right now. Um, okay, and then there's a bronzing contour question. So she says, starting above the ear and ending at the brow tell, that's an awesome tip. Oh, she said it was a good tip, not a question. Thank you. I'm glad that was helpful. And then she says, lines as crisp as the November air. I think she means contouring. Yes. We like our nice sculpted cheekbones, you guys. For a contour, I'm going to turn Michelle a little bit. For contour, I generally like everything blended, but I do like a nice cheekbone. I feel like it's good. Like I'm not a big like baker when it comes to beauty, like how people will bake with powders. It's a term, but I will sometimes bake under the cheekbones. In fact, I can show you guys right now because that gives you like such a sculpted jaw and it is nice. So I use, I generally use like a sponge, but I didn't pull any today. So I'm going to use a brush, but you're just going to take, I'm going to show you this way. You're just going to take your translucent powder and you're going to go right under your bronzer to the edge, about the edge of your lips. And you're going to let that sit. This is called baking. But notice how little product I am doing. Um, if you ever see like videos on this being done, they will use so, so much product. And you can, but like, again, the texture and Michelle's skin is already naturally a little bit dry, she was saying, so I don't want to do a ton of powder on her. But just doing something like that, the longer you let it sit, the more it's going to brighten that area, but I'm just gonna let it sit a little bit. Just dust it off. You guys can see how that gave her like a nice sculpted cheek. Cheeks are magical. Okay. Oh, and the, she's talking about the crisp lines for the lips. Yes, I'm, I love a defined lip. Oh, and um, people's stomachs are growling <laughs> in the chat now. <laughs> it's contagious, I'm telling you. Okay, and then someone likes Buxom's Dolly. Yeah, Dolly's like one of the colors that are like a must. It's really pretty. It's kind of like a mauve pink, the rose pink. I love it, love it, love it. All right, Michelle, are you ready to see your makeup? I my glasses okay. on. Oh, are you ready to kind of see it? <laughs> oh, but before I show Michelle, let me show you guys her before. So Kelly is going to flash... Michelle's before, before the eyes, and before the brows. And we went so low, light on the brows. You have really great brows. Okay, we good, Kelly? Okay, we're good. We got the thumbs up. Here you go. Oh, wow. Glamorous. <laughs> so pretty. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I like the foundation. I like the foundation, too. Everyone says yeah. it feels very light, too. Like, it's not yeah. super heavy. That's the one thing that I wish I could get down, because it's... It's the lighter. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. Sometimes it just takes playing around with different brands and stuff like that. I'm gonna dust you off slightly. All right, well, Michelle, you were the best. Thank, thank you for you. being my it. model. And thank you guys for watching. You were fabulous. We are live, um, this month we're live every Tuesday and Thursday around 10 a.m. Pacific time if you want to join in on the chat. Um, if not, if that doesn't work with your schedule, there's, we leave the live up as a replay, so you can watch the videos anytime. Thank you, guys. Thank you.